Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar from teddybaldessar.com. In this video, we're looking at a fan favorite from Bulova with the Bulova Lunar Pilot. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at this watch, look at all the details, things to consider before buying. Also though, in this video, if you have any questions about this piece, link in the description down below to purchase the watch as well as to book a consultation with one of our watch specialists on teddybaldessar.com, full authorized dealer of Bulova watches. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look, at this watch. And the watch that we're gonna be looking at today, the Bulova Lunar Pilot. On its surface, you hear moon watch and things of that sort, and you also look at the design and think, maybe this is just pulling from maybe another area in the industry and just being a blatant copy. But in order to really appreciate this watch, you also have to understand the history and where this watch is coming from as not a copy, but a standalone historically significant piece in its own right for the brand Bulova. Looking back to 1971, American astronaut David Scott famously brought and wore two different watches on the moon aboard the Apollo 15 mission. Scott wore the NASA-issued Omega Speedmaster during his first two moonwalks, but unfortunately the piece didn't survive the second time out. On his third walk, he brought his personal Bulova pilot watch, which was a moonwatch concept at the time, which had not been engineered to withstand the conditions on the moon's surface. Amazingly, the watch survived the moon's surface and later would survive the equally harsh re-entry into Earth. After returning, the watch would remain tucked away for more than 40 years before eventually being auctioned in 2015 for $1.6 million, going down as one of the most expensive pieces of astronaut memorabilia ever sold. Then shortly thereafter, Bulova first started with the actual reissue of this lunar pilot chronograph to really pay honor to that Apollo 15 watch. And now the piece has become a cornerstone in the brand's catalog. Aesthetically, this revival model does an excellent job capturing the essence of the original piece as the case, dial layout, hands, and markings are all in line with the way the watch appeared in 1971. And simply put, when looking at the world of more attainable watches, when you factor in the history behind this piece, as well as the faithful re-edition, and considering what's going on from a technological standpoint in regards to the movement, as well as just the, I think, very popularized look of this piece, it's certainly going to be one of the watches in the price category to look at. But let's first begin with looking at the wearability and the case. Now this watch does come in a variety of different strap options, so that is going to make this one fluctuate in price quite a bit, as well as affect the wear a bit as well. So I'm gonna be speaking mostly to the stainless steel case variant with the bracelet to match, because personally, this is the one that I think delivers the most punch. And for a more attainable watch like this, the bracelet is actually very good, but let's speak to the actual measurables here. So it measures at 45 millimeters in diameter, 13.5 millimeters thick, and a 53 millimeter lug to lug distance. So hearing all those things out loud, it is going to sound like a larger watch, which it certainly is. It is towards the larger end, but fortunately, even at this size, the watch doesn't really overwhelm the wrist as much as you would expect. It actually does wear pretty well. I would say it wears in comparison to more of 42 to 43 millimeter case and fits pretty snug with that bracelet around the wrist. In terms of recommendations for wrist size here, so 6.75 inches and probably above, so that's about 17.15 uh, centimeters here. So I would use that as a guide to say whether or not this watch is for you. And I would say that's probably towards the smaller end, uh, but those with say medium to larger size wrists, this will be right up your alley. The lugs are relatively short and nicely curved, which allows the bracelet to fit snug around the wrist. And the mid case is fairly thin. So giving the watch a low center of gravity so it doesn't slide back and forth while wearing. There is a nice combination of finishes to this case, so, so most predominantly a bead blasted look on the sides and the back of the case, accentuated by a brushed bezel and a few high polished surfaces on the crown and exterior edges of the chronograph pushers. The push-pull crown is easy to operate in any position and is flanked by large rectangular chronograph pushers, a little bit different compared to the typical uh, pusher design, but this longer type of format allows the actual watch to wear a bit I'd say tighter to the wrist in regards to its diameter across. In addition, both the crown and the pushers tuck nicely to the side of the case, so you don't feel any digging or discomfort while wearing it on the wrist either. In terms of finishing on this case, you have to give this one a thumbs up. When you're seeing it underneath the macro lens, it'll probably even give further, I would say, proof behind this claim because this one, it does just from a finishing perspective, 
wear and feel much more premium for the price that it has. Attached to the case is an excellent three link brush finish bracelet. So every surface on the bracelet has a finish keeping it uniform down to the buckle. There are plenty of sizing links including two half links, which are really useful when you're trying to get a perfect fit on the wrist. This is a pin adjusted bracelet system, so pretty standard for this price point, but should be pretty straightforward in sizing if you have the correct tools. The buckle is a classic butterfly with two push buttons on both sides, and when closed, it feels completely safe and secure. This kind of quality bracelet and buckle combination, you probably would expect on watches that are much higher. In terms of it actually on the wrist, it wears incredibly well, very breathable, and just feels more substantial when you look at these links. These aren't hollowed out links, they're very solid and have a nice weight to them without really weighing the wrist down to an excessive degree. As mentioned at the beginning, there are different strap options available with this watch, but I personally would recommend spending a little bit of extra money and getting the bracelet version. You'll probably wanna be able to come back to this when needed. That said, given the versatility that comes with a dial of this type, certainly going to have a lot of options when it comes to strap pairings. Covering the dial is a thick sapphire crystal, which sits about one millimeter above the bezel, just as it did in the original pilot reference. So since it does sit above the bezel and not flush with it, you could potentially run the risk of possibly hitting the exposed edge, but because it's made from sapphire glass, durability shouldn't be an issue during just normal wear. The crystal covers an expansive step matte black dial, which includes an inner bezel tachometer, which sits a bit higher than the main dial surface. The hour markers are white luminous batons within a steel frame to give a nice modern touch. Now matching the dial markers are fully luminous hands for the hour, minute, and central seconds. The subdial hands do not feature luminescent paint, so if you're running your chronograph in the dark, unfortunately, you will not be able to read those sub-registers. The step subdials are black with concentric circular patterns and white lettering, giving the dial a bit of visual contrast against the flat dial surface. Now, in terms of the actual finish, in terms of the dial, I think a lot of the same ideas that were presented for the case itself are also here. The legibility is fantastic. The actual just texturized surface looks great underneath that sapphire crystal. And the white on black just makes a very striking visual appearance and also very in line with the typical moon watch format. Flipping the watch over, you will see a bead blasted screw down case back that allows 50 meters of water resistance for this piece. And a nice feature of the case back is also the inscription detailing the time and place on the moon that the watch was actually worn. But underneath the case back is really, I think the next talking point that actually probably needs some really good, uh, I would say detailed description of, because when you're probably looking at the front of this watch, you see that sweeping second hand and assume something, it's pretty clean sweep for what it is. But actually what we have inside here is a highly accurate, high frequency quartz movement, the caliber NP20. Now this movement beats at an incredible 260,000 times per second, which is eight times more than the standard two prong quartz crystal that'll be in you know a regular quartz watch. Now used only in a couple other bull of a model such as the Chrono C, the movement features include a continuously running sub seconds hand, a sweeping central second hand, a 60 minute register, a cool one tenth of a second register that adds some visual flair while the chronograph is operating. There's also a matching black date wheel with white lettering located between the four and five o'clock. But outside the aesthetic of an actual sweeping second hand for a quartz movement, the most incredible feature again, going back to the oscillating of the course here, 262,000 times per second, that is going to offer up in turn incredible accuracy as a result of this. So for a traditional quartz movement, typically you're going to be seeing around 15 seconds per month being around the average. Incredibly accurate when you compare to even a cost certified Swiss chronometer running at deviations of minus four to plus six. Very impressive, but you also have to keep in context that that is over a single day. Now, when looking at this Bull of a Lunar Pilot in terms of accuracy, you're taking that 15 seconds a month, which is already impressive, and then trying to stretch that over to a year. So 10 to 15 seconds a year is with these high frequency quartz is usually where you're gonna see performance out of these. So in terms of just high precision, this is almost as good as it gets in the marketplace. But when looking at this watch when it's running, it's going to be hard to decipher whether or not this is a mechanical or quartz timepiece, which makes, I think, the quartz snobs in the audience probably a little bit easier to give this one a pass. All right, so now to unpack and take a closer look at the Bull of a Lunar Pilot from a high level. Now, in terms of the points of consideration when looking at this timepiece, I would say the number one con of this watch is going to be the size for the majority of the people out there. Now, this is going to wear much smaller than that 45 millimeter case size, 
Uh, for example, we'll show just a, uh, this on the wrist of Will. He does a lot of the shooting here. He has a wrist size around seven and a quarter inches, and it works very well on his wrist. He has no problem with pulling this one off. But for those with smaller wrists, this is going to simply be a no-go, which is unfortunate because on the flip side, this simply is one of the more intriguing, affordable, or attainable watch. I don't wanna throw affordable out there so loosely because this is still a significant uh, chunk of change to be throwing at a watch. But in terms of what you have packed in that price, this is certainly a standout. Legibility is great. You also have the historical connection of this timepiece. And in terms of the accuracy of this watch as well, while getting kind of that clean sweep that many people I think we like to see when they're going for a mechanical watch, you get that with quartz accuracy, really a winning combination there. So simply put, if you want a historically relevant, well-built, incredibly accurate moon watch design, the Bull of a Lunar Pilot is the best one under $1,000. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If you're also interested in purchasing this watch, link in the description to teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Also, if you have any further questions that were not answered in this video, please do not hesitate to book a time with one of our watch specialists on our website. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.